In this video, I will be covering a topic as diverse as the most elaborate menu you have ever encountered at a restaurant. Yes, we're talking about what types of foods you should consider for your food stockpile. Understanding that covering all these food types in just one 8 to 10 minute video would be like trying to devour that extensive restaurant menu in just one sitting, I will be serving up this information in bite-sized portions, across a few videos, in order to do justice to this vital subject. Choosing the right foods to stockpile is not as easy as you may think, and certainly not as routine as your monthly grocery shopping. In fact, stockpiling food is a serious decision that can make all the difference when faced with unforeseen circumstances. The notion of being able to survive 21 days without food is not entirely scientific. Instead, it is a notion based on review of people who have undergone such a real-world dilemma. I am sure that none of us wants to be the guinea pig to prove whether the 21-day estimate is too far-fetched or too conservative. Besides, in the case of severe dehydration, the body will die within three days. The stockpiling of food for survival is not only essential for sustenance, but, also equally essential as a necessary risk avoidance tactic. If you can self-sustain during a bunker-in or bug-out situation, it means that you will avoid any direct exposure to whatever caused the situation in the first place. As a prepper, it is important to understand that your short-term needs for food in the immediate 7 to 21 days aftermath of whatever prolonged crisis has occurred, should be met by your normal food stock that you purchase through your weekly or monthly grocery shopping. During a crisis, as much as we would want to avoid unnecessary exposure to risk, if it is still possible to purchase food in a controlled environment, then you should do so until such time it is no longer allowed, or, when the environment becomes uncontrolled, or possibly life-threatening. This would be a calculated risk, but still an opportunity to optimize the present food availability whilst at the same time, pushing out the future date when you will need to actually dive into your food stockpile. If you are already a prepper you will know this, and, if you are new to prepping then you must know this. The underlying principle of stockpiling of food for survival, is that, it is about staying nourished, avoiding desperation, and ultimately it is about self-preservation. It certainly is not about gourmet cuisine or winning that reality TV cooking show. The first element would be choosing shelf-stable foods that will not require any refrigeration during the duration of their storage. Foods chosen must be non-perishable and must be storable for a period of a year or longer. Secondly, the non-perishables chosen should at least be of sufficient variety to ensure balanced nutrition. As much as you will need to consider foods that your family will normally consume, since you will still have to rotate the stock by replenishing it with fresh items, you will also have to ensure that you choose foods that are old school rather than some fab product with its own hashtag or recommended by a person who has never been in a do or die situation. Thirdly, the quantities of items stored should provide you with a minimum of 6 months of self-reliance. Why 6 months? This is a minimum, but you should aim for a longer period. The logic behind the minimum period of six months is threefold. The first is about cost and familiarity. Unlike the very expensive specially prepared and packaged long-term food products that are made specifically for the prepper and or survival markets, most of the store-bought non-perishables which we purchase have a best before date that vary in range from six months and longer. Some even have a shelf life of three or more years, but most allow you a year to consume from their date of manufacture. Also, these regular store-bought non-perishable foods are probably what makes up your regular menu, and importantly, will also be familiar to your digestive system, and, have some form of psychological calming benefit during a crisis. Compare this to eating a fortune-costing, I have never tasted it before meal, that has some fancy-sounding name combinations with a photoshopped picture on its label, which, your digestive system might reject outright through whatever body orifice it deems quicker. The second part of the six-month logic is about keeping it simple. While prepper food stockpiling for whatever time period target does require some science and specialized storage practices, the initial six-month target will enable you to delay the often expensive and complicated route of long-term food storage that usually comes with words such as, mylar bags, heat sterilization, oxygen absorbers, etc. I will cover long-term food stockpiling much later on, but for now, keeping it simple works best. Thirdly, six months as a target, is to get your mindset right. As much as most of the food products that you would have stockpiled in its original packaging will have a shelf life of at least a year, there will be that one product that is going to expire in the next 6 or 8 months. Knowing this, you would then exercise more due diligence and management over your stockpile, that is, scheduled checking, rotation and restocking, which then ensures you will always be a step ahead. 
By using this basic logic for a minimum six-month window which will involve just some basic maths, some timekeeping, and some trolley bumping, it allows you time to become good at the basics first before really going big and going more long-term. So, what foods do you target for your food stockpile? When drawing up your list of what to get, consider your family size, the normal serving ratios that each member usually eats, and the probability that your regular three meals a day will become only one or two meals a day, perhaps supported by in-between snacks. For instance, if on a normal day two cups of boiled rice is sufficient for a family of four's dinner, then you need to factor how long a bag of rice, in the quantity that you would normally buy, will last you if you had to consume rice every day for the next six months. You would also need to consider the resources that would be required to make that pot of rice, that is, water for cooking the rice, gas or another heat source for cooking, and whether these resources will be sufficient to provide you with a month of cooked rice. Similarly, you would look at the in-between meal spaces and decide if you are going to stock up on filler meals like instant porridge or a similar food, and whether the calorie intake will be sufficient for the day, as well as what other resources you may need to cook these filler meals. It may not sound as easy as you thought, but, it is still not rocket science. It is just about doing the right thing right so that when the day comes, you and your family will be all right, and at least not becoming a 21 day without food statistic. Canned foods are the obvious first choice. However, there are some basics to consider when choosing your products other than just looking at the best before date. Whilst we expect that there is award-winning quality control at the source of production of a canned food product, we are also aware that this may not always be the case. And, once the canned food hits the road, it is at the mercy of the truck driver, potholes, other road users, the offloading process at your local supermarket, and that merchandiser who tries to balance 10 cans whilst packing the shelf. You need to watch out for cans that have dents, especially dents that are near the top, or cause damage to the side seam. A damaged seam compromises the integrity of the can and is an entry point for bacteria. Also ensure that there is no evidence of bulging or rust anywhere on the can. In the realm of non-perishable food products, the best before dates often spark confusion. If you were discussing this at a lively braai or barbecue instead of the usual topics like sports, politics, and religion, there would be diverse opinions. Some might suspect it's a marketing ploy by manufacturers to push us to buy more, while others could argue it's for product protection. And, well, a few might just be too engrossed in watching the meat sizzle. Essentially, the best before date indicates the shelf stability of the purchased food. The U.S. Department of Agriculture USDA, clarifies that use by, sell by, and best if used before dates are about product quality, not safety. Even after the best before date, you can still consume a canned food product, but it might not retain the intended quality. The nutritive and appearance value could have declined, as certain nutrients may have degraded, and the food may have lost some flavor or may started to discolor. Though the best before date provides a guideline, the risk of food poisoning from canned food products exists both within and beyond the stated shelf life window. Botulism bacteria, a dangerous culprit, might even contaminate the canned food product during the manufacturing process, especially when the canning process is substandard. Often at risk are low-acid vegetables like beans, corn, and peas, where these could have picked up the actual bacteria spores from the soil. Eating canned food that has been contaminated by this bacterium can kill you, and even if treated, the victim may still suffer nerve damage. Creating a stockpile management system is crucial as bulging and denting can still occur after you have bought the product. When opening any canned food product, whether before or after the date window, be cautious and vigilant. Do not even bother to taste it if it spurts at you when opening, or smells bad, or contains a milky-looking liquid. Dispose of these immediately and make sure no one else, including your pets, can get into them. Choose canned food products that can be used in one go to make a meal, that is, either by itself, or, when added to another main ingredient. This means there should not be any content remaining in the can which you have to keep fresh by refrigeration or other complicated storage methods. Buying food for survival purposes and not using it completely is wastage and certainly irrational. Ensure that whatever you buy does not have a keep refrigerated indicator on its label. Other than your family's personal preferences as to what type of canned foods they would want to stockpile, the traditional canned food for stockpile purposes are the usual suspects like baked beans, pilchards, corned meat, canned tuna, mixed vegetables, etc. Even if you do not have a personal preference for any of them, remember that during a crisis, these canned food products have proven to become valuable barter currency. In the next video, 
I will discuss the stockpiling of dried food products, and why this is a must, and, a no-brainer. For now, identify and start building up your canned food product stockpile range. Remember, be strategic. A friendly warning. Do not forget the canned food opener. Even canned food easy open tabs can still break if not levered properly. So, keep a never let you down simple canned food opener as part and parcel of your canned food stockpile. As the one in the kitchen drawer always gets lost. Subscribe to the South African Prepper. Like and share my videos with your family, friends, and colleagues since we are all in this together. Here you get real information, and fact-based insights and guidance. I don't do opinion or BS. Preparedness is not a hobby. It is a way of life that could save your life.